Well, something's between us. I don't know. <laughs> So at the time of the original movie, Hans, working on a Disney film was quite unusual for you, and even as now... Well, it was completely... Un Actually, no, that's not true. I'd already worked on... Di I just hadn't done any animated movies. But I think it was unusual for them to suddenly have an African voice over their opening titles. And what was it about The Lion King's story that attracted you to it? Partly the wrong reasons, which was my daughter was six years old and I'd never been able to take her to any of any premiere and dad likes to show off. Um, the story wasn't fully developed either. I, I saw the script way after the movie was finished. And it was really Rob Minkoff and Roger Ellis, the two directors, they, they'd be in this room with storyboards and they'd start showing me storyboards and tell, telling me the story and they'd get sort of five minutes in and they'd get to one storyboard and they would disagree about what, what its meaning was. And they would just start arguing and ignore me completely. And so I never quite got the story until I really started working on it. And then came that moment of the father dies. You know, and my dad died when I was a kid. So suddenly it became, uh, you know, a, 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 a lot more serious. I mean, but one of the things, actually, you know, it's interesting you start off saying I'd never done any Disney movies, which is true. But I mean, the thing that I knew was um, don't ever talk down to children. So I thought, you know, well, okay, if, if this deals with the death of a father, I'm going to go and write a serious requiem. And what did you do differently this time? And what did you want to keep the same from the 94 score? Fix a few things from the 94 score. You know, everybody wants to go and fix a couple of things. What did I do different is less me than the musicians. I had all my, uh, t truly all my favorite musicians in the room, all 102 of them. <laughs> and it wasn't like I had to explain to them what the Lion King was. You know, I didn't have to explain to them why they're playing those notes. Because they knew why they're playing those notes, because everybody knew the Lion King. So I could actually focus on getting, uh, you know, these incredible performances out. So the difference is that you know, just like John using computers, it, it, we managed to make a much more improvisational, much looser, much more sort of human film in a funny sort of way. And, you know, you've written so many really memorable film melodies. How do you know when that great melody or that great idea comes to you? How do you know that it's special? I sort of don't. I, well, I, I just know when it's not. Actually, before I started this one, I looked through, looked through some old files, I mean, some old tapes. And there were 48 tunes as main themes for The Lion King. They were, not, none of them were terrible, but none of them were like it. Do you know what I mean? It's like, and so, um, and I've never used any of them. It's like, that, you know, they're, they're sort of just sort of, they're just on the edge of getting thrown in the bin. Do you know what I mean? But, but you somehow don't quite. You know, it could come in handy one of these days, but no, they're, they're no good. And what have you learned from revisiting the score for a second time round? I just, I just thought it was interesting to, to be able to look at this film with, with a completely different point of view. And the mm -hmm. point of view is much more, you know, the Sir David Attenborough point of view about, you know, oh my God, look at this planet, it's so beautiful, and what are we doing to it, and how can we go and actually wake up and save it for our kids?